Hey guys, Moose here. Welcome to another episode of Life is Feudal Forest Village. Food is a little lower than usual, but fine. Totally fine. We need to use up our eggs and milk big time. Which hopefully we're doing at the moment. Need more fruit in order to continue doing that, but we knew that going in. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I am... As per usual, kind of in a weird spot today, a little bit. I wanted to be more productive today. It's kind of like I'm recording this on Tuesday night, so it's the day before. You know, I have a stream on Wednesday, so Wednesdays are a little bit busier than usual. So I was, you know, like, hey, it's, you know, this is the last day before a stream, because then once you hit Wednesday, it's Thursday, nothing, Friday, stream again, and then weekend. So I was like, okay, I should probably get some stuff done. I got fuck all done. I should have been working on stuff, but mostly playing games and kind of daydreaming. I've been thinking a lot about uh, writing and stuff and kind of what I would even want to write, what kind of story I would want to tell, all that. So something I need to like actually work on though instead of just daydreaming about it. And then everything else is about work because I'm still kind of in this situation where I'm trying to uh, develop this tool and I have none of the data to do so. But today I got some of the data. Like, I, well, I created it myself, but um, it, it's moving. The problem is the fact that the data exists means that the project is underway. Like the, the activity that I'm I'm analyzing is happening so I'm sort of like testing it live basically <laughs> and I'm not IT so on top of the fact that I'm not like this isn't my job it's I'm doing it in like the most stressful and difficult way but it, I think it'll be fine it's just a pain in the ass it's a lot of work I think that's all it boils down to I think we can oh that got upgraded so here. That's fine. I don't even know what I'm building right now, but whatever. What am I building? These guys? No, they're done. So what, what are those four people doing? Is there some deconstruction going on that I don't remember? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know where those guys are working. Or if they're even working. Whatever. Give them some more work to do. We're still kind of clearing out Old Town. It's been a long time. Our old little area here. Look how far we've come. To be fair, pavement didn't exist back then. But look how big this town is compared to the others. And this, by the way, this is... I haven't talked about this in a while. Just in case anyone's new to the series, doesn't... You know, you haven't been here for the full 221 episodes. Um, this is kind of as big as you can reasonably make a town, in my opinion. Because the problem is, if you go much bigger than this... And it's not necessarily a population thing. You could go higher population. And I still could expand this way, but you can kind of think of it as there's a radius within which towns can exist, and you kind of need to have everything together. And that means, like, all the jobs and storage and housing all have to exist within this circle. This is, like, the maximum length of that circle, basically, I think. Because right now, this house probably can't, won't, it won't look at these for materials. They just won't come here. They can maybe reach some of these, I'm not even sure about that. They can definitely reach these. But basically they're, they're very much dependent on having things close enough that the AI will path to it properly. The way that you would get around that from a design standpoint is either you would designate one person, their job would be to work 
in the house to bring stuff to the house and that would just be what they do for a job or you make the days longer and you say well you can use these at the same rate but you store like make them store more here then um wait no that doesn't my brain is not working properly the way that you get around I don't know, to, to be able to come up with a solution for this, I kind of have to assume what their issue is. If I assume that their issue is that uh, it's taking too much processing power to, pat to do all the pathing, then the solution would have to be that they should... Uh, I can abandon this now. The solution would have to be to... Why is this one not fully staffed? Do I need to have... Maybe I don't need two teachers. I'm just gonna guess that I do need it. What? Why is this? This actually has a radius. That's hilarious. I had no idea these had a radius. That's really cool. That's actually very helpful. I didn't even know that was a thing. Anyway, so if I assume that the issue is the pathing, like it's taking, it's too difficult for the game to handle, which has come up several times because if you sometimes if you pause the game. Or no, if you don't pause the game and you just say, hey, I've got 20 people not doing anything, I'm going to assign them here, that can cause the game to lag slightly. And that's kind of a sign that it's, it's having some trouble with the pathing. So if that's the issue, then you would just make tasks less necessary. You would make pathing less necessary. Make it happen less often. Yes, they need to travel to their job, and they need to travel back home, and they need to do all these things. But if you if you minimize the number of times they need to do that, depending on how you're calculating it, like, it depends if they're... So this, I don't really know. I, I've never programmed this kind of a thing before. I'm just thinking through logically how it might function, which is something I frequently do. Um... Probably there, there's one of there's two versions I can think of. One version is that each villager has the town will have several points of interest which change all the time. It'll be like, hey, this location contains this resource, and that's important because you want them to go to a storage location to pull something out. But really, like a villager would have two two locations saved: their job and their house, and then. You, maybe they count periodically, like on a timer or some kind of interval, calculate paths between those. But that doesn't totally make sense because that's kind of an inefficient way to do it once you start factoring in storage. Because storage is highly variable, it'll change all the time. So, probably the way that you'd do it is you'd say, in the town, the villager would have their, their witch work, like this has some kind of building ID associated with it. Same as every other building, and this building ID is where they work, and this building ID is their house. So they would, you know, say like, hey, it's nighttime, run, function, go to sleep, <laughs> or something. Like, go, you're, hey, you're hungry, so run, function, go to house. So they say, okay, where's my house? And they say, well, I'm here and I need to get here. So the fastest way to do that, depending on where you are in the farm, is to go through one of these exits and then come here. I don't know, like that, I'm not going to go into the details of how you do that, because I don't know them, and I'd be, I'm, I'm guessing anyway, but when you're guessing and kind of mentally working through the logic of something like this, you just keep it general. Because you're going to be wrong anyway. Like, I, I ultimately, realistically, probably don't know what I'm really talking about, I'm just thinking based on my knowledge of programming, hey, how does this probably work? So if they're calculating when they need to go do something, logically the way to mitigate any kind of lag resulting from that would be to say, well, I'm going to make it so you don't have to calculate often. It just say, you know, maybe maybe you just say I'm trying to think how you do this because for balance reasons you might not want to say hey villagers can hold more stuff because that means that hauling is less of a factor 
you know? So maybe, maybe you say hauling is easier because they can carry more, but then harvesting, harvesting is um, slower or something. Like there's things you could do. It wouldn't be, that one's kind of not great, but uh, I don't know, man. Like maybe things that get used in houses are easier to haul, but then again, you're making hauling easier here. And the only thing you really want to make easier is the hauling that's an issue, which is to houses. I think probably having a dedicated person for it's the easiest thing to do, but that, I don't know. It's weird. I like, I'm, I'm, the more I think about this, the more I realize there's a lot of variables that I just don't know the status of in the game and how they work and how it's programmed. So it's hard for me to say like, okay, well, it should work this way because blah. Cause I, I just don't know how they do it. So any any guesswork is basically going to be based on a bunch of assumptions that are almost certainly incorrect. So anyway, it's fun to think about any uh, how pathfinding works regardless, even if I don't necessarily know how exactly it works here. I, I find that kind of a thing really interesting. Thinking about, okay, well, if you were... Just forget syntax and all that crap, because that's not really the, the real point of programming. Uh, forget all that. Just think about the logic. Think about it as a logic puzzle. How do you get a villager, an entity, to figure out where they need to go? And that, I think, is really interesting. And a fun little, like mental problem to figure out and I don't really know to be honest that like the details of how you do that obviously you need to have some kind of coordinate map that says this this is passable this is not right you need to be able to say this spot on the map is passable and can be accessed. This spot on the map is not passable and cannot be accessed. And it's that's pretty binary, but you have to have a map of the whole thing. And every... Like, you need to have this level of detail, basically. You need to be able to say that. And I think it's a little bit different in a game like this, because at this point it's not just... This isn't just a 2D game, because here, like... This, this is different from this, right? You're because you can go up here, and that's functionally different than going here from the game's perspective. So it's not just a two D map, I don't think. Maybe it is because you maybe that just distorts it. I don't know. I don't really know that. That's where it gets really weird. But on a very basic level, you'd have to understand what's passable and not what what's not passable, and then I guess have some kind of like there. I don't know. Because I'm trying to think. You'd say like, okay, well, say you're in the middle of this farm and you want to get to this house. You're gonna to want to travel in the direction of that house. So you'd say, go this way. <laughs> and then you'd hit the corner here and you'd be like, well, now what? And then I guess you just have to pick, I don't know. There's, I'm sure there's like, uh, there's loops that try to find the most efficient path. So you'd basically, maybe you'd say, Oh, that might be interesting. You'd say, okay, well, these are these four spots, these exits are passable. Therefore, these are like snap points. So if you were dragging from here to here, it would automatically say like, well, you have to go through one of these. So we'll snap here. And then there's no other impassable terrain in the way. So you just kind of go. That might work. But then that wouldn't, I don't know if that would necessarily work. I don't know. Anyway, like... That, that kind of thing is what I kind of spend time daydreaming, not daydreaming, but kind of like thinking about like, hey, how does pathfinding work in a video game? That's interesting. And if I was more dedicated to it and actually like was productive, I'd go online and read about it. But 
Mostly I just like seeing like, hey, can I come up with a logical way that this might work? Yeah, it's just interesting to think about it that way. And just sort of like with no idea at all, just say like, hey, how might this work? It's kind of one thing like really I lucked out on when I was growing up. Yeah, you can see it's lagging here because I'm saying cut down this tree and the pathfinding is like, what, how do I do that? I don't know what to do. Gotta make all these paths. It's real, t real tough. Totally forgot to take people off of farming. That'll help. We need to actually make some more farms now that I think about it. I'll let it roll here. Uh, that one's good. These kind of suck, but... Oh, there we go. That one's good. We'll do three. Ore is a big deal. We are actually using it at a rate that is meaningful, so we'll get that rolling. Why did I take off all the builders? That's not what I meant to click. But yeah, that's the kind of thing I think about. I grew up, uh, like I was saying, I got kind of lucky as a kid because I was given by, I think, my parents this book called, like, How It Works or something, and it had, like... From super simple stuff to super complicated stuff, like it would have not schematics, but like cut up, cut out. Um, y you know when they like take a baseball and they're like, "Hey, we're gonna show you how a baseball works," and it's like a it's a baseball that's been cut a half, and you can see the whole inside and all the layers and everything. It's like that for, for like airplanes and ships, and like here's how a jet turbine works, and it's like, oh, that's actually really cool. Stuff, you know, maybe as a kid, I don't totally understand every detail of that, but still it's something I can read and be like, hey, I kind of have a very general idea. It works by forcing air through a, a small hole in the back, basically. Um, obviously, it's a lot more complicated than that, but in a very general... And I kind of am mad at myself that I don't really know how that works at the moment. But... Um, that kind of thing is really interesting. I enjoyed that a lot as a kid, and it got me interested in thinking about, like, hey, well, you know, if I see something, one of my thoughts is like, gee, how does this work? What, how does that happen? And, and that kind of critical thinking, I think, is really important for a kid. So that definitely helped me become who I am today, I think, which I appreciate. There's some things in my childhood that I did not appreciate. That was one of the ones that I did. It was objectively a very big positive in my life to have that kind of uh, access to information I guess this is pre-internet too so it's not like I could just you know dick around on Wikipedia for four hours plus it, there's some you can get lost in Wikipedia and run into stuff that's pointless and completely meaningless like if you have a book in front of you that's like hey here's how all these 50 things are made and how they work like that's directed it's, it's a little bit more of a curated experience, so I think that'd be better for a kid, personally. But again, personal experience and preference, I guess. Everyone's different, ultimately. And I'm a, like, I'm a pretty analytical, you know, math-based, logic-based. Really logic-based. Logic is my strength. Math is... To a degree, math is logic, so I can do that pretty well, but it's more it's much more logic, which is the foundation of uh, programming. Which is why I'm fascinated by it. Everything is like it you in programming you're given a set of tools, basically, and you have to you have to understand a problem and kind of reframe it mentally in a way that a computer could comprehend. And I find that really interesting. Like, it's it's like solving a puzzle. It's exactly like solving a puzzle. And you have to use logic to do it, and I love that. That's what I enjoy about it. So. Anyway, a little bit about who I am as a person. Didn't plan on talking about that, but I generally don't plan on talking about anything in particular. I just kind of... This is really pretty much no filter. All my commentary is pretty much no filter, and I just kind of like... You're you're getting a view of what my brain does just kind of when it's left to its own devices. I kind of just go all over the place and just sort of like... 
It's it's not like um, I get distracted by every little thing, but there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, oh hey, that's cool. I wonder how that works, and like just thinking non-stop. I don't. I actually have trouble sleeping because I, I kind of don't stop thinking. And some of it isn't like logic or anything. It's just like, hey, what would be... I'm like putting myself... The more creative side... And this is a little bit just fantasizing, but... You know, let's say I, I was recently watching like the Clone Wars animated series on Netflix or something. Which I recommend watching. It's very good if you like Star Wars. What if I was in that universe? You know? What what would I want to be? How would I act? What would I, like... And it gets frustrating, because you're like... You, you wind up feeling like, Oh, but I could be in there and tell the characters, like, Oh, you're so stupid, this guy's clearly the evil guy, you could solve all the problems. And that part's stupid, but... Kind of thinking about... Because I don't just think like, Oh yeah, I'd be, I'd be a Jedi, and I'd blah 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 blah, and be super powerful. It's not just that, it's like... I, I go, like, to the day-to-day, -day, like, how does this work in this universe? <laughs> like, how does food work in Star Wars? Like, how does drinkable water work in Star Wars where you're on all these alien planets? Like, is the atmosphere really breathable for pretty much everyone breathing the same stuff on all these different planets? Like, I'm thinking about, like, the weird... The things you don't, like, maybe normally wouldn't think about. Where, like, you, you go travel to a different country and there's, like, a little thing like, well, geez, I, did, I couldn't even comprehend that we would do something differently than the way we do it in my country. That kind of thing I try to think about. Because it's weird. It's interesting. Like, I, I don't know. It's interesting to me. Some of it is the power fantasy shit. Because who doesn't, who doesn't fantasize about that stuff? We're all, we all do that. But a lot of it isn't. Anyway, with that bizarre topic of conversation, which again is just something I find interesting, which is why I talk about it, same as everything else here, that is it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, there's always the Twitch stream, Electronic Moose on Twitch, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, 6 to 8 p.m. PST, 9 to 11 p.m. EST. Prefer to watch here on YouTube? That's cool too. Thank you for watching. We're getting quite close to being able to remonetize our shit, so thank you for that. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.